What's the worst part of any fire? Well, you got it. It's smoke. There's nothing worse than smoke, and it can follow you. All you have to do is put a chair near that fire, and I guarantee that smoke is going to come right towards you. So, you know, what started out as a great evening, the kids are coughing. They can't even do their marshmallows because that perfectly dry wood you have is smoking because the fire pit is lousy and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, there is. We're going to show you step by step how to build your own smokeless stove at a fraction of the cost. Stick around. We're about to begin. Okay, where do we start? Well, you're going to need a couple 55 gallon drums. They call these open head. That means you can take the lid off and it's got a locking band. You're going to need two because you're going to uh, need quite a bit of metal to do this and one just isn't enough. Plus, look on the bright side, you're going to have some spare parts. And uh, once you get these two drums, uh, pay attention to that tip. Make sure you match the lids and band to the proper barrel because they are not all the same. The other biggie here you don't want to forget is make sure that the contents of this drum was not flammable or combustible. Because if you start grinding into this thing, you're probably not going to live to talk about it. So, you know, there, a lot of these factories have these open head drums for soaps and things that are harmless. So that's a biggie. Do not forget that and don't try to use one that's got any um, flammable vapors inside of it. Here's a drawing showing your cut lines. This is going to come in handy down the road because you're going to get a little nervous before you cut into that drum and ruin anything. So refer back to it. Here's a picture of the bottom of the drum, uh, the opposite end of the lid, the removable lid, and this will eventually be the top of your stove. The diameter of this 55 gallon drum is 23 inches, so make sure you didn't accidentally get uh, a 30 gallon drum, which is going to be considerably smaller. Just wanted to point that out. Next thing we're going to do is mark the bottom of that drum. I found it a lot easier just to take my silver permanent marker and put it in the notch where my blade would normally go. The blade was removed from my jigsaw and then just run it around. And what that gave me was one and three quarter inches all the way around the perimeter. Now this is not crucial. It doesn't have to be one and three quarter, but I would make it at least that much. And you want enough space between your inner and outer drum. So if it ends up being a hair more than one and three quarter, don't worry about it. Uh, if you have to use something other than your jigsaw, well then just uh, take a piece of wood that's 1.75 and run it around that inner edge. But that's the way I did it. Before we start doing all of this metal work, let's make sure we have good safety equipment. You're going to need eye protection, ear protection, you're going to need leather gloves, and you should probably have some long sleeve uh, shirts on so you don't have to worry about those sparks catching your arms on fire. Let's go ahead and drill a 3 8 starter hole for our jigsaw blade. Make sure you drill that hole on the inbound side of that line we just made so we don't mess up the top of our stove. While we're talking about jigsaw blades, these are the ones that I use and they work great for me. They're very durable. They're made by Bosch. You can see at the top it's got a 3 rating for the speed of the cut. Now in my case I've got an older jigsaw that uses a U-shank. If you've got something newer it's probably a T-shank. So, And if you're not sure just bring your jigsaw to the hardware store and they'll, uh, they'll help you out. But this is a good blade and this is the one I recommend. Okay, let's go ahead and cut that out. And one thing I do want to tell you is, is once you get your blade and your jigsaw and you start the cut, you're going to have to hang that rear left side of the jigsaw off the top of the drum. Otherwise, you won't be able to turn it. So don't try to keep the entire jigsaw on that lip. It's just not going to work. And 
you'll see what I mean right away. But anyways, just to hang that off on the outside as you're going around and you're going to be good to go. Stop the cut about halfway through and take a putty knife or anything you have and uh, put it in place. And by doing so, this disc isn't going to try to drop on you and pinch your blade and give you problems. It's going to help you in the long run. And there you have it, the finished cut. Now you have a lot of fun getting rid of all these burrs. And you definitely want to take time doing this on both sides of this disc and that inner lip on both sides. Just take your time. You'll be fine. I used a combination of tools. I usually use just a, a metal file and then I like to use an orbital sander with a 100 grit uh, on the sander or by hand until you, you know, you get rid of all burrs. You don't want anybody getting cut on the stove when you're done with it. The other thing I wanted to bring up is the build height of this project. My Ford F-150 has a bed liner, so that raises the level of the floor a little bit. And when at all possible, I like to keep that tunnel cover closed when I'm traveling. So uh, I've got to make sure I'm less than 21 inches. Now, if you have a, a Chevy or a Toyota, well, it probably won't fit. Uh, I'm just messing with you. But uh, who knows? If you decide to build this and you have a smaller truck, Maybe you should just tell your better half that you're going to need a Ford F-150 and you can thank me later. The next thing we're going to do is put some blue tape on the lid end of the drum. This tape is going to be used for making marks that will allow us to drill the vent holes that will eventually be on the bottom of the stove on the outside drum. So go ahead and wrap that tape all the way around and then take your T-square and mark one and three quarter inches all the way around the perimeter. Once you've got that done, it's a lot easier if you get yourself a, a cloth tape like a seamstress would use or something to that effect. And wrap that around and tape it in place and start marking off one inch increments on that line you drew on that blue tape. We're going to end up drilling holes at each mark. For our next step, we're going to need some bits. In order for these holes to come out nice, we have to start with a smaller hole and work our way up. So we're going to need a 1 8 inch bit, a quarter inch bit, and a half inch bit. Eventually we'll need a 3 16 bit for rivets, but for this purpose of the vent holes, it's only 1 8 1 quarter, and half. That half inch bit is going to require a half inch drill, so if you don't have one, you may have to borrow one. And if you don't step forward and enlarge these holes a little at a time, what's going to happen is, is that half inch bit is going to get real grabby on you and start peeling out metal in something that doesn't look like a circle. So uh, just uh, keep your bit cool. You know, I was using a small container of water. I could continuously uh, dip the bit in just to keep it cool and make those bits last longer. And don't forget about that deburring and sanding. You're going to have to get a three quarter inch deburring bit and go easy with that, just enough to get the burrs off and then use your orgle sander with that 100 grit to do that final edge and get everything off of there so everything's nice and safe. We're going to need some more blue tape. You're going to go 15 inches from the end of the drum that you just cut opposite of the uh, lid end. So, and you just cut, you're going to put your blue tape down. You're going to draw a line all the way around the perimeter that's at 15 inches. And then you're going to go ahead and mark the same one inch increments with that claw tape because we're going to be drilling more holes. That's going to end up being the holes at the top of the inner drum. Next step, we're going to measure out our 14 inch and 16 inch cut lines. You can use a 16 inch T-square or you can make your own T-square out of uh, pieces of lumber with a perpendicular piece that you can run on the, the uh, 
lid end and uh, use your permanent marker and mark both lines out. You can see on this little chart here what the pieces will end up being eventually. Starting from the top, there's a the outer drum, which is 14 inch piece. There's a band we're going to use uh, that's going to attach the uh, smaller part of the outer drum at the bottom there. It says outer drum 2 inches. That will be attached to that 40, 14 inch piece. And uh, we're also going to have a inner drum, which is 16 and a half inches. So, all right, so we marked our 14 and 16 inch lines. Or if you want, you could mark just the 14 and take uh, two inch blue tape and run it around and the other side of that blue tape would be your 16 inch cut. And the next thing you're going to have to do is uh, you're going to have to drill some starter holes for your jigsaw. The other thing you can see I did here in a photo is I, I, I made sure that when I get done with this band that gets cut out, this two inch band, I want to round off those corners so no one gets jabbed when they're handling the stove. So that's important, but I just wanted to show that on uh, the drawing there. And I don't want you to cut this yet either. I want, I want you to go ahead and mark it, and you can drill your, your starter holes for the jigsaw, but we're going to go to the other end of the drum, the cut end of the drum, opposite of the lid, and we're going to mark off one and three quarter inches. And I know it shows in my cut diagram that that's a, a two inch section, but don't be alarmed. You got to remember that we're measuring on the inside of the lip of the drum. So if you include that lip, it will be, in fact, a, a two inch piece, which will be our eventual top of the outer drum, the top of the uh, stove. So go ahead and mark that out. And after we mark that out, same deal. You're going to have to use your. Uh, your 3 8 drill to cut a starter hole and then we're going to cut that line first and then we'll go back to our 14 and 16 lines and cut them out as well. The logic behind drilling first and waiting to cut those 14 and 16 inch lines is if we were to go ahead and cut those 14 and 16 lines and then drill afterwards and then try to do the other two inch end. Well, it's going to make for a floppy drum. It's going to be harder to handle. And, you know, this is just going to make your life a little easier. All right, you've cut that one and three quarter inch measure. And now you know the routine. You got to get rid of all the burrs. Same way you're going to get rid of the burrs when you go to cut that uh, two inch band here next. So go ahead, get rid of all those. Use your files, use your sanders. And we'll go ahead and start cutting that two inch band next. Now we get to cut our two inch band out on our 14 and 16 inch lines. So go ahead and get that done. You've already got your starter hole drilled. And once you get that done, what we're going to do next is we're going to have to take that inner drum portion and we're going to have to cut a line on that. And what I want you to do is take a, a T-square and make sure you've got a nice perpendicular line to that cut edge. And put some blue tape uh, along that T-square. And we're going to cut that all the way because we're going to have to make sure this uh, drum is cut. Because we're actually going to be folding it inside of the outer drum and trimming some of it off. So... Go ahead and cut that, put your tape on there, make sure it's perpendicular, get that cut, and then we'll go to the next step. All right, so you've cut your perpendicular line on your inner drum. Next, what you're going to do is make sure, of course, all your burrs are gone and you've seen that everything's smooth and put those leather gloves on. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that two inch ring that we, uh, that we made, which is the top of the stove, and you're going to fold that inner drum overlapping itself enough where you can take that ring and slide it over the top. Now you're not going to be able to push it down too far because the way these 55 gallon drums are made, there are ridges that will prevent you, but that's okay. You know, uh, just push it down a, a little bit past your 
your vent holes and the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take a sharpie and you're going to mark along you know on the inside of the drum of the inner drum you're going to mark along that overlap line and once you get that that's going to be your cut line so keep in mind that we, we aren't cutting from the inside we're going to be cutting from the outside so you're going to have to take some blue tape and you're going to have to make sure that uh, you make little references on that tape which side you're going to be cutting on and uh, go ahead and put a little tape on uh, on one end and wrap it all the way down to the other end so it hits the marks and then make sure that you go to that tape on the outside of the drum and you put some type of a reference showing you where to cut because if you cut on the wrong line if you don't cut on the right line, your, your inner drum's going to be one inch short and you're going to have to throw it out and you'll say bad words. So a word to the wise, do that. You do have a second drum if you had to, which is good. You've got a backup plan, but you really don't want to go that far. You put too much work into this inner drum. So go ahead and put your tape on there. And once you've got that, you're going to go ahead and cut on uh, the line you're supposed to. And once that's done, you're going to take your, your Irwin clamps, I like using those quick grip clamps, and you're going to make sure that uh, you know you put that drum back inside that two inch ring, and then you're going to take your Irwins and you're going to clamp the drums so those ends of the inner drum are touching. Okay. Now if you can clamp them together and they're touching and you can still fit that two inch ring over the top where the vent holes are, well then you've done a good job. Now if you can't and you're trying to muscle that that two inch ring on there, well you, you know you just you're gonna have to trim off a hair more. If it's too tight just mark again where those pieces of the inner drum overlap and take it out of that two inch ring and mark it up with tape for a nice straight edge and cut a little bit off and put it back together and you should be good to go. But go ahead and uh, clamp it back together, uh, make sure you drop your ring on, and if everything fits, we're good to go on the final uh, inner drum cut, and we're ready to put our uh, reinforcement piece on the inside with rivets. All right, so now what we want to do is take that scrap piece that we have from our inner drum that we just cut off, and you're going to want to cut at least a three inch piece and go ahead and cut three inches off and um, once you get that what you're going to do is you're going to uh, take that scrap piece and throw it on the inside of the inner drum make sure the uh, the inner drum edges are touching each other and center that uh, that scrap piece on the inside of the inner drum so your vent holes are lined up nice and pretty and clamp everything so you'll be able to drill and rivet clamp it down make sure the inner ring fits and then you're you're good to go as far as drilling your holes and riveting and let's talk a little bit about rivets before we get into drilling all right let's talk about rivets these rivets are not going to be found in your hardware store. You're going to have to either go to a specialty store or in my case just get them on Amazon. And you can see that uh, these rivets look like they might be considered a, a half inch grip range, but they're not. You know, they're a, a quarter inch grip range and you have to make sure that their diameter for the hole is 3 16th. You're going to be using 3 16 drill bits make sure you at least have one or two of those but uh, another thing I will mention is stainless rivets are tough on the hands when it comes to using a hand rivet gun and if you have one or decide hey I would like to own one of these uh, go to Harbor Freight and get yourself an air powered rivet gun and you know who knows maybe by the time this project is done you'll end up with a few extra tools and there's nothing wrong with that you can always use them for future projects but just wanted to mention that that these stainless uh, rivets are tough on the hands and you need them you can't use aluminum 
All right, you're ready to drill and rivet. And one little trick you may want to do is take your two inch ring and drop it over the top. And that way you know for sure that this inner drum is going to fit in that two inch ring when you're all done. Uh, you're still going to want to use clamps holding that reinforcement strip on the inside and make sure those vent holes are lined up. The other thing you have to remember too is, is when you mark your rivets, and you can see in this picture the rivets are already done, but when you mark your rivets, make sure the rivets near the vent holes are below the uh, vent holes. Otherwise, it's going to interfere with putting the stove together or taking it apart. One benefit of this stove is you can take it apart to clean it properly. And uh, as far as the rivets on the bottom, keep them four inches from the bottom of the inner drum too. And uh, we're only going to use six rivets. That's all we need. These are tough stainless rivets and they'll work just fine. And I've also included a picture of that uh, pneumatic rivet gun. And uh, this really makes your life a dream. You're going to be doing quite a bit of riveting on the uh, nose cone. So you'll see that later on. But uh, let's go ahead and clamp it up. Put your ring on first and drill out your holes and go ahead and put your six rivets in. Okay, it's time to use that two inch band that we had left over after cutting our 14 and 16 inch lines. So the first thing you want to do is put some witness lines down the middle of that on the inside and that's going to help you center it over the upper and lower portions of the outer drum. Now these rivets are going to be 12 inches apart and you're going to stagger them so they'll look closer than that when we're done. You're also going to have some rivets reinforcing the corners and I've got a picture to show you that but just so you know the total count for rivets on getting the band done was 15. So you know, you got to watch it on your rivet count because you only got 50 of these if you ordered them from Amazon. If you ordered more than 50, well, you can use all you want, but I only used 15. When you're marking, because it's a two inch band, you have to remember that the rivets will be an inch and a half away on the top row and only a half an inch away in the bottom row. Get all that marking done before you start drilling and riveting, it's going to make your life easier. The first part about making this pagoda are making these copper standoffs. Now, when I started to design these, I realized that I couldn't have something with a real tight fit because over time that inner drum is probably going to heat up and warp a little bit. So that's the purpose of having that half inch piece with the slot in it inside three quarter. It's going to allow a little bit of wiggle room. If, if I didn't do that and I tried to cut that slot in a three quarter inch piece, I think it would be a real struggle to get the uh, inner drum on. And the purpose of these standoffs are it allows our airflow to come from our outside holes on the outer drum and go underneath the inner drum. So they're pretty important. And what we're going to do is we're going to make four of these. Now, if you look at this picture, you can see we're going to have to go to the hardware store. We're going to have to buy a few things. We're going to have to buy four of these three quarter inch caps. We're going to have to buy a short section of uh, three quarter inch pipe. A lot of times they won't make you buy a eight or 10 foot section. You can buy a two or three foot section. And the picture doesn't show it here, but you're going to also need a short section of a half inch copper pipe too. And we'll give you some detail on that picture here in a minute. But let's start with this three quarter. You're going to cut four of these uh, at one and three sixteenth, and they'll be inserted into that cap. That'll give you a total length of an inch and a quarter. Then you're going to grab your uh, your half inch copper and you're going to get quantity for those cut and you're going to cut slots in all of those at least an inch and a quarter deep and once you get those done 
you can also see what I, I did to make it easier to insert the inner drum is I brought these over to a, a belt sander. You could do it with a Dremel or whatever you need to do, but I widened the top of the slots, which would make it a lot easier to drop that inner drum. So that's, uh, that's step one of the Pagoda build here. We have to get those copper standoffs made. And here's a tip on cutting those two inch sections of the half inch copper. Mark your pipe off and then take your jigsaw and cut that inch and a quarter slot first. And then take your pipe cutter and cut it to a two inch length. It's going to be way easier and way safer. Here's another tip for widening those slots on those two inch sections. You know, maybe you don't have a one inch belt sander. Well, I think uh, you could just take your tin snips and just nibble off a piece on each side and then give it a little bit of sanding with a piece of sandpaper to remove any burrs and I think that's going to do the same thing for you. Alright, so here's how we're going to go attaching these copper standoffs to the lid. And it's all about alignment. Uh, we've got to make sure that when we install these that we're never going to have a hard time with putting this stove back together. So first step, lay your lid down. Second step, uh, drop your four standoffs on the lid and slide the inner drum onto all four. Make sure when you set this inner drum in that you take the seam on the inner drum where you riveted and you're going to line that up with that small drain on the lid. And that's going to help you down the road when you go to take this apart and reassemble and not have any problem. Once you've done that, get all of your standoffs opposing each other, all four. Make sure they're nowhere near any of the drains when you do that. Once you've got that done, you're going to take, and, uh, take your outer drum and drop it down on top of your, uh, your inner drum and make sure you push that outer drum all the way down. Use a rubber mallet if necessary to make sure that it is firmly into the lip on the lid. Okay, so if as long as that outer drum is in the lid and as long as that seam on the inner drum is lined up with the drain and you've got your standoffs the way you want, try to center that uh, small half inch piece of copper into the center of each three quarter inch cap. You know, just do the best you can. You don't want it jammed up against the side of a three quarter inch cap. And once you've got everything just the way you want it with your seams aligned, you're going to take a Sharpie and you're going to mark the outside of that three quarter inch cap and mark the lid. You know, make sure your lid is clean and dry, otherwise your Sharpie won't leave a good mark. Now you're only going to be able to get about a, a half circle and that's okay. Uh, just be gentle when you're marking it so you don't move your standoffs. And once that's done, you're going to pull this all apart and you're going to take that three quarter inch cap and you're going to complete the circle and that's uh, going to give you a reference on where that standoff is going to be. Now you can just eyeball it and put a sharpie dot in the middle of each circle and uh, on each of those dots you're going to be drilling a 3 16 hole for your stainless steel rivet uh, you're also going to have to drill 3 16 holes in the uh, 3 quarter inch caps. Uh, you can see by this picture I wasn't really careful on at least one or two. And I really should have tried to uh, maybe use a prick punch to uh, get that drill bit centered on the cap. But uh, And once that's done, you just drop your caps back on top of your lid and uh, rivet all four and your standoffs will be complete. And you'll see at the end of this project, when you go to take apart this stove and put it back together, it's important that you line up your seams with that small drain. Because as much as you'd like to think that this inner drum is round, it isn't. And if you don't and you just jam that inner drum on there any way you want, well, you may have a little bit of a tough time 
dropping that outer drum on. So uh, use that tip and let's move on. All right, the standoffs are done. Let's go ahead and build the bottom plate of the pagoda. You remember when we cut out the bottom of the 55 gallon drum, one of our first steps? Well, we're not going to waste that scrap. We're going to take that and we're going to make that bottom plate of the pagoda by taking the, uh, the bottom of a five gallon bucket and put it on top of that plate and use your tape measure and keep uh, measuring all the way around until you've got it perfectly centered. Once you do, take your silver sharpie and mark that and then we're going to drill that out. Make sure that you put your starter hole for your jigsaw to the inboard side of that so it doesn't look ugly on us when we're done. And uh, go ahead and use your jigsaw, clamp that to the edge of a table and cut maybe up to half of it and then rotate it again and and cut the rest and of course we have to make sure we sand and deburr and get that all in good shape. Well we're not done with that bottom plate of the pagoda yet. What we have to do is we have to remove some of that perimeter on that plate or it's going to be way too tight on that inner drum and we can't have that because we're going to be disassembling it a lot to clean it so Go ahead and grab your jigsaw, and you can just freehand this. There's no need for a compass. And remove a quarter inch from the entire perimeter. That'll give us a half an inch of free play, and that'll make our lives a lot easier when we go to clean this stove in the future. Make sure you dry fit it. Make sure you can drop it into that, uh, that inner drum with no problem, and it's loose because... If it's snug, you're going to have to cut it again. Just make sure you get that loose and assembly of the stove will be much easier. All right, next step, we're going to make the top plate of the pagoda. That plate is going to be 12 and a half inches wide. What I did was I took a compass and I taped a Sharpie to it and I drilled a small hole in the center of that. Now make sure when you're cutting this out that you uh, you try to position the plate where it's not going to grab any indentations near the drains or anything like that. So, And if you don't have a compass, well, you could probably make one out of a couple of pieces of wood with a Sharpie tape to one end and a nail tape to the other and uh, just uh, widen it until you get six and a quarter inches and uh, put it in that hole you drill in the middle and you'll end up with 12 and a half. So go ahead and get that done and when you're done with that you're going to have to make sure you uh, sand and deburr all of that. All right now we need to build some separators for the floors of our pagoda. We're going to need eight of them and they're going to be two inches long. We're going to be using three quarter inch copper so let's go ahead and get those cut. Now once they're done, the next thing you're going to want to do is take one of those separators and put it on the inside edge of your lower plate. Mark the outside of that separator, do the rest to the three others and make sure they're opposing uh, as best as you can eyeball it you're going to need to put some dots in the middle of those and drill them out. Go ahead and grab that 12 and a half inch upper plate of the pagoda and drop it on top of the lower plate. Using a tape measure, just keep going around the outside edge until you get the same measurement and you'll know it's centered. Once it's centered, go ahead, duct tape that top plate to the bottom plate. Make sure your steel is all dry before you duct tape it or otherwise it's going to peel off. I know from experience. Uh, once you've got that, now you're going to flip those two over. Let's mark all of our holes right now because if we don't and we don't use the same holes for all of our bolts going up through, uh, it's not going to line up very well. Remember, we eyeballed the separators. So go ahead and mark all those and then what you're going to do is you're going to take a sharpie 
and you're going to mark that top plate through the holes we just drilled. Once that's done, you're going to go ahead and drill all of those holes on the top plate. All right, how's everybody doing? You need a break? Need to get a refreshment? Hit pause. That's what it's there for. All right, we'll carry on here. What we want to do now is we want to create some bolts for the pagoda. Now, originally when I started designing this thing, I looked at bolts at local hardware stores. And depending on where you go, you can definitely pay uh, as much as $3.30 for a, a single bolt. So I'm trying to keep costs low for you guys. And that's why we can make the same bolts without having to go through all that expense. We can use threaded rod. It'll be a lot cheaper and maybe a little more fun if you like cutting steel. So let's go ahead and uh, grab that threaded rod and we're going to measure it off. We know that it's eight inches is what we need. So in my case, I use a cutting wheel on a side grinder. And you can see by the pictures that it's not too pretty when we're done here. So there's a before on top and an after shot. So when you put this on your sander, whether it's a, a grinder or a sander, this is what you want when you're done at the bottom. So go ahead, cut those, grind them off, get rid of all those burrs. Once you're done with that, we got to remember to use a half inch drill bit for the upper and lower plates of the pagoda and only a 3 8 drill bit for the bottom lid. That half inch bit for those plates of the pagoda is going to give us a little bit of wiggle room to move them around. So let's go ahead and drill all of the pagoda plates with half inch holes and before we can drill the bottom holes in the lid we have to mark the lid. So take your bottom plate of the pagoda and center it as perfect as you can get on your lid. That's important. You're going to need that. You don't want this bottom plate of the pagoda snagging up on the inside of the inner drum. So Mark it with a pencil because you're going to have a little bit of uh, distance between the plate and the bottom lid just the way it's shaped. So don't move it at all once it's perfectly centered. Mark it with a pencil. After you're done marking all four holes, don't forget to number those marks on the lid to match the numbers that you have on the pagoda plates. That way all your bolts are going to line up. Then you can remove that bottom plate, make a little dot with your silver sharpie and go ahead and drill the 3 8 holes in the lid and half inch holes on all the pagoda plates. Bear in mind that those first holes I drilled in the pagoda plates were a 3 16 bit as a starter and if you want to go higher on that before you get to the half inch you know be my guest to go up to a 3 8 and then the half inch just so that bit doesn't get grabby on you. All right, what are we waiting for? Let's assemble this pagoda. First thing we want to do is make sure our lid is oriented in the right position so the lip will receive the outer drum when it drops on there. Next thing we'll do is grab four of our bolts we made. Uh, let's put nuts on the ends of those and slide them up through the bottom and let's drop on four of our two inch copper separators. Next step is the bottom plate and keep in mind you know you've got numbers on the bottom uh, lid, the bottom plate and the top plate and they all have to match. So uh, uh, now we've got that bottom plate on there with our numbers matching and we got four more separators. All we have to do now is drop on our top plate and what I like to do then is uh, grab four washers, drop them on first and then uh, tighten down that nut. We've still got a couple more things we got to do before this pagoda is finished. The first thing we have to do is on our bottom plate you can see where it is protruding over the top of our copper standoffs. So just take a sharpie and uh, mark out a little semicircle 
so it will not interfere with putting that inner drum on and you're going to have to do that on all four of them and the next thing you want to do is just snip those out um, go ahead and get your your tin snips and cut them out and then take some type of a file or sander and make sure all those burrs are gone so nobody gets hurt there and once that's done the only other thing we have to do is our bolts are probably going to be too tall we're not really going to know how much we have to cut off the pagoda bolts until we install our burn plate and I'll show you that next. All right, to make our burn plate, we're going to have to use the bottom of that second barrel. We're going to cut it a little bit different than the bottom of the other barrel, the first one we did, but pretty close. Half of it will be the same. The outside of the barrel, we're just going to run our jigsaw right along the outside. That's going to give us approximately a two inch height on that. Uh, uh, fire ring for uh, keeping the temperature off the bottom of the stove. Now the inside we're going to do it a little bit different because what we want for a burn plate is 17 and a half inches. So we're going to have to draw a circle that's 17 and a half inches either with a compass that we have or we're going to have to make our own compass and once you have that 17 and a half inch uh, circle drawn on that you're going to have to cut out that plate uh, the inside of our inner drum is approximately 18 and a half so that's going to give us about a half inch space all the way around that burn plate so let's go ahead and get those both cut out you know what I would do is I would cut out the uh, metal plate on uh, the top of that first and then run my jigsaw around the side of the barrel and get that done secondly. All right, so we've got our burn plate cut out. We've deburred and sanded and made everything safe. Now all we got to do is uh, drill some holes into this burn plate. I've got 29 holes in mine, and I used a compass uh, to put them in some type of an orderly fashion. I didn't want to put the holes too close to the edge. I've already got a nice vent there with a at least a, a half inch space all the way around. And if I got my holes too close to my brackets that are going to hold the burn plate, it might weaken it. So anyways, just use your compass and it isn't uh, something that has to be exact, but uh, the neater you make it, the better it's going to look. And then go ahead and uh, drill those out. If you got a drill press, it sure is going to make it easier. Uh, I would step up still, you know, I would I would at least drop in a, a 3 16th uh, hole first. And uh, if you got a drill press, you might be able to get away with going a uh, half inch after that and then deburr and sand. And the next thing we're going to do is make our burn plate supports. All right, let's get these burn plate support made. Now I had some spare stock around and uh, had to cut them to size. But if I didn't have these, I would have just uh, taken some flat stock and bent them at 90 degrees and uh, just give yourself enough room where you can get your rivet gut in there. Uh, I would make each portion at least an inch and a half long. And, you know, in my case, I wanted to drill two holes on the portion that was going to be riveted to the inner drum. I don't believe one rivet is enough there, but on the top, I only wanted to use one rivet just to give it a little bit of flex under high heat. So um, that's the deal. Get those made. And here's a nice chart here that shows you uh, how to go ahead and put those in. Uh, basically, all you have to do is measure up from the bottom of the inner drum five and three quarter inches to the top of the bracket and mark your holes then drill your holes and rivet let's move on all right let's get this firing done there's not a ton of work to do here you're going to have some 
ventilation holes all the way around the perimeter spaced every four inches. You could probably put a, a few more than that if you want to, but that's what I used. Uh, those are half inch vent holes. And the other thing we have to do is we have to get uh, four bolts that are going to be a three eighths in size by one inch long with four nylon lock nuts. What you're going to do is you're going to drill holes on the lip of that fire ring that's going to be a half inch from the inside edge. And once you do that, go ahead, put your bolts in, tighten them up. And if you're lucky, you'll be able to just drop the uh, lid of your stove onto that and it's going to hold it. Now, for some reason, it uh, doesn't allow the lid to go all the way down or it's a little sloppy. Just go ahead and take some vice grips and grab that bolt and uh, bend it in or out, whatever you have to do. It's going to bend fairly easy, so don't worry about that until you get the fit just right. And once you're done, uh, you know, you're obviously going to have to deburr everything too. Now I'm going to order a piece of plastic edging that will go on the bottom of this fire ring. And the only reason I want to do that is, is I've picked up the whole stove while it's on the fire ring. And even though I don't have any burrs or sharp edges, it's really too sharp of an edge to pick up. Plus, if for some reason this fire ring ends up on a surface I don't want to scratch, it's going to protect it as well. So the fire ring is done. Let's uh, go back to our pagoda. We need to trim those bolts to size, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, what I'd like you to do is set your pagoda down and don't put in the half inch pieces of copper. All you're going to need is the three quarter inch pieces that are assembled on the bottom. And now you've got that. What I want you to do is I want you to drop that inner drum uh, all the way down. And what's going to happen is, is the bottom of the burn plate is going to hit those bolts. We know they're too long. So go ahead and drop your inner drum on there and you're going to see an air gap between the bottom of the inner drum and those three quarter inch copper pieces. Now in my case, I had three eighths of an inch air gap. So that tells me I'm going to have to at least remove three eighths of an inch of those bolts, but that would be playing it too close. So let's just go ahead and uh, let's remove a half an inch. So our top left picture shows our air gap after our drums on and uh, burn plates touching the bolt and the uh, the top right picture shows my double nuts brought down to a point where I know that I'm going to be at three inches which is going to remove approximately a half an inch of product off those bolts. Uh, once we cut off the uh, top of the bolts, then what we're going to do is uh, the picture on the lower left shows that the inner drum is now touching the copper. Make sure all four are touching. If they aren't, then you may have to trim an individual bolt on the side that's still showing an air gap. But if they're all touching, then go ahead and uh, tighten up your double nuts. You're done. And as a final fit, you could throw those half inch pieces of copper into your standoffs and make sure everything's copacetic there, but that's going to do it. Our, our bolts on our pagoda are now trimmed and when I got done cutting off the top of those double knots, I made sure they were tight and I used my cutting wheel to act as a, a grinder and uh, just smooth them up nice, no burrs, etc. That's it. We are done with the pagoda. All right, let's do a reality check here. What we're going to do is we're going to assemble this stove. Go ahead and uh, drop your pagoda on the floor or the ring. It's done now. And uh, go ahead and uh, put your copper standoffs in, all of them. Then drop your inner drum in. Make sure it's uh, firmly seated, no wobble. And then take your outer drum and push it all the way in and use your rubber mallet if you have to. And, uh, give that a tap. Make sure it's seated into the lid. What we're checking for here 
is we want to make sure that those holes in the inner drum are below the deck of the outer drum. That deck, was, what I'm talking about is that uh, two inch space going all the way around the top. That, that's critical. If for some reason you could see the deck through the holes, well, uh, that's not good. You know, uh, for some reason you cut your copper standoffs a little too high or something, but we've got to make sure that those holes are below. Now, mine aren't much below. I mean, I think I'm, oh, I don't know, a uh, quarter inch or whatever, but as long as they're below that deck, we are in good shape. Now, if, um, if you're in good shape, we can move on to the next spot. If you're not, well, look and see what you've uh, done wrong. Possibly the, the biggest problem would be uh, either you drilled your holes um, a little too high or uh, hopefully it's something as simple as those standoffs being a little too tall and you may have to trim a piece off of that three-quarter inch copper that drops into the three-quarter inch cap. But, I just wanted to mention that before we move on and work on our nose cone. Okay guys and gals, we are closing in on the end of this project. All we have to do now is go ahead and grab yourself some of that scrap metal we have laying on the floor and cut yourself a piece that is three and a quarter inches long and two and a half inches deep. We're going to be using that as a template. It's going to be easier to mark our nose cone pedals uh, versus trying to put a tape measure on there. So go ahead and grab that, get that cut exactly to size. Like I say, three and a quarter wide, two and a half inches deep. And now run that all the way around the inside of your nose cone and make your mark uh, for not only depth, but width all the way around. Now, if it doesn't come out perfect on that last pedal, well, use your best judgment. But if we did everything right, we should have um, pretty good looking even pedals on that. Um, here's the part where if you get a little bit lazy, you're not gonna have a very good nose cone. You're gonna have tons of air leaks. I've seen some people who build these smokeless stoves uh, when they go to make the pedals, uh, and keep in mind, the whole, the whole idea of this nose cone is it, it holds that smoke in place while that air is coming through the inner drum holes. So it won't allow that smoke to escape and just go up into the heavens. It's retaining it just long enough for that fresh, oxygen-rich air to get to it and ignite. So it's important. Um, anyways, getting back to the task at hand here, you know, mark everything around, but do not, I repeat, do not cut these slits with a cutting wheel on a, a side grinder. What's going to happen is, is you're going to end up with wide kerf. And if you don't know what kerf is, I'm a woodworker and I, I deal with kerf a lot. And it's just the amount of product that's removed. You know, you're going to have less kerf on a bandsaw than you are on a table saw. And so what we want to do is take our tin snips. After we get all our marks, we're going to carefully cut down to that depth line of two and a half until they're done all the way around. And here's a little tip for you. When you get to the point on the inside of the inner drum, when you um, go up and measure your marks where that strip is, the three inch strip that we riveted to keep the whole inner drum together. What you can do is mark that down two and a half and then carefully fold the top of that strip down. Remember, we didn't rivet uh, above those holes and fold it down to that two and a half inch mark and carefully snip that out of there. Because if we don't, it's really gonna make our life uh, a little miserable because uh, chances are one of those vertical lines are going to end up on that strip and it's twice the thickness. So just go ahead and, uh, you know, cut out uh, only two and a half inches of the top of that reinforcement strip that we riveted in and we'll move on here. 
All right, our nose cone petals are all snipped. Now what we're going to do is we're going to individually fold them down at that two and a half inch mark. And what we want to do is fold them down uh, always in, uh, let's say you start uh, clockwise, you know, and always keep folding in the same direction. Just don't start mashing them all down. Do them one at a time. And, you know, look at my pictures just to kind of visualize that angle. I don't know. Let's say it's a 45 degree, but bend down that first pedal about 45 degrees. And then what you're going to do is when you bend down the second, third, fourth, fifth, keep moving in the same direction so the overlap looks nice. What you want to do is bend those pedals far enough to achieve a half inch overlap to allow a room for drilling a hole and riveting. Don't play it too close. So uh, you, uh, you want to get that half inch overlap. Now, once your pedals are completely bent all the way around, and you may have to tweak one and push a little farther if it isn't delivering that half inch overlap. But once you've got it, go ahead and take your channel lock pliers, or I'm sorry, take your vice grip pliers and carefully grab both pedals just enough where you can clamp them together nice and tight and then give yourself enough room to drill a 3 16 inch hole and you know you're going to be freehand in this but just make sure that you're not going to hit the edge of that pedal that you can't see and you'll be fine you know just make sure you've got that half inch overlap you're going to be able to do it so go ahead and uh, drill the hole now you can see where I probably had that hole position down at least oh I don't know three-eighths of an inch by the time you get the finished hole you've at least uh, got a little bit of material left above the rivet don't play it too close at the top either so go ahead and uh, drill one out put your rivet in and uh, go ahead and uh, Make sure that you rivet after you're done on each pedal and move on to the next one. And there again, that uh, pneumatic riveter is going to make your life easier on this project with those stainless steel rivets. But go ahead and finish up the whole job and get them all riveted and we will be done with the nose cone. All right, we are so close to the end here. Here's one option you may want to consider is putting a little bit of anti-seize on those steel plugs. The reason I say that is, is that large drain plug is definitely adequate enough to stick the end of a garden hose in there. And you may find that uh, with just ashes in there on the pagoda that you want to just hose it out using the plug and not take it apart. So. I would uh, advise getting some of this anti-seize, putting it on the threads of both plugs, and that way you're never having to worry about that rusting up on you. With that said, the last step we really have here is to paint our Jolo fire stove. And in my case, I did a beta test with this stove and uh, lit it a few times before I went ahead and painted it because I decided there may be changes I needed to make. And don't worry about that if you do that. Uh, just take a wire brush and knock off any loose flakes and paint right over the top. I went with this Rust-Oleum High Heat, a quart of it. Uh, at first I started thinking about using spray paint, but for me spray paint would just be a hassle for this project. We got a lot of surface areas here. We have to do both sides, the inner drum, outer drum, and every little part of this. So I, I think I'm going to end up with thicker coverage. And I did have uh, uh, some left for other projects uh, in my garage. So it worked really well for me. It laid down nice. So uh, I would stick with this Rust-Oleum High Heat. Uh, it worked really well. And go ahead and get that on there and let that adequately dry and put it back together and we have ourselves a completed project, painted and finished.
Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this stove all apart. It's one advantage of this build is, is you can take this entirely apart and hose it out and maintain it. A lot easier than some of the other uh, manufacturers that make these. So first thing we gotta do is we gotta remove our bolt. I've already loosened this a little bit. Let's uh, loosen that up. Let's flip the stove over. Let's use our heat ring to hold it and not bend our nose cone at all. So let's go ahead and get this bolt off of there. Okay. Once our bolt is off, Take our ring and take one side, peel one side off first, and that'll come right off. All right, get yourself a screwdriver, put it in one of the holes, and it'll help you pop your lid off. There we go. All right. Now we can remove our pagoda. We'll set that aside. There's going to be four copper standoffs that are still attached to our inner drum. Let's grab those. We're going to need these for reassembly. Okay, now we'll just give this a little wiggle, this inner drum. All right. Inner drum comes out. Set that aside. And now you've got your, your outer drum, you can hose that off as well. And let's show you how to reassemble now. So you start with your heat ring. First thing you want to do is put your pagoda back on. And here's that little tip I uh, talked to you about during the construction of this. Uh, use that small drain hole as a guide to reassemble this back together the same way. Trust me, it's gonna make it easier because even though this build seems like it's round, it's more like it's oblong and it's gonna go back together easier. So anyways, put your pagoda back on your heat ring, take your standoffs and drop them back in the receptacles and put the slots parallel with that bottom shelf of the pagoda. So those are in. Now, next step, we've got to take our uh, inner drum and put that back on. What I like to do is line up the seam of this inner drum with that drain. We'll wait for Mr. FedEx to go by. Okay, so let's take that seam and we're going to drop it into our standoffs one at a time. Just work your way around. Sometimes it goes quick, sometimes it doesn't, but it's not a big deal. Alright, and if it doesn't wobble, we know we've got it. Okay, so inner drum is in, we're all lined up with that seam. Let's take our outer drum and a little tip here keep your hands on the outside otherwise it's gonna try to pinch it on that nose cone same thing here we've got a got a seam on this so we're gonna line that up with that drain too all right now the first part that's gonna be a little tough is getting this over that uh, nose cone that's a tight fit now, don't use your hands, you're going to end up uh, hurting yourself. So just get a rubber mallet and give this a couple taps. It'll drop on there. And don't be afraid to uh, give it a good whack. This is a pretty tough build here. Okay, you'll be able to tell. Just make sure that lid is all the way in, all the way around, and it looks like it is, so that's going to be tight enough. You're going to be able to lift this without that locking ring, so let's 
flip it back over so we can get our locking ring on there. You can hold it a little bit just to make sure it doesn't fall off. Put it back on our heat ring. Let's grab our locking ring. Now, one tip you gotta remember here is these lobes can either be facing up or down while well, we're reassembling. We want these lobes to be facing down. If you don't, this won't set into your firing properly. So start it on one side. Pops on easy. Grab our bolt. We won't tighten this all the way. We'll just snug it a little bit so we can flip it back over. And, you know, finish the job with a crescent wrench. We won't do it right now. We'll just snug it. I actually upgraded this bolt to a stainless bolt. You don't have to do that, though. If you worry about it rusting, you know, put a little grease on there. But I like the idea of using stainless, so. Okay, the locking ring is on. we got to flip it back over. Drop it back in our heat ring. And that is it. You know, not too bad. Easy enough to take apart. Easy enough to clean. I wanted to give you guys some comparative costs and dimensions for this build once it's done so you can use this as a reference to see what you've got when you're all done. The other thing I wanted to do is show you the actual cost that I had. Now I owned most of the tools so I didn't have to go out and buy any but just borrow them from a friend and if you do have to buy a tool well that's one of the best parts about being a DIYer. Okay, I wanted to add this disclaimer. You know, you see a lot of people using these fire pits while they're camping. That's my intention. You also see some people using them on patios, and that's great too. But one thing I would never do, I would never advise, is putting one of these over on one of these. You know, I spent an awful long time building this deck, and these smokeless fire pits they run hot and yeah I've got a burn ring and all that but you know who knows it could it could damage your deck worst case scenario it could catch it on fire you know after you decide to go in at the end of the night and um, you know and you can't throw water on these to put them out you're gonna warp the stove so you know just don't even think about it you know if you decide to use this on your deck well that's on you but I just thought I'd throw that in there for safety's sake. Well, that's a wrap. And the end result for me was, is, well, we have a couple happy campers here. I want to thank you all. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our Pompano Brownie channel. And that'll do it for this video.